What is up guys? Welcome back to Vanover Customs and in today's video we're going to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look at what's going on over here at Vanover Customs for 2024. Every year in the beginning me and my wife sit down and we make a list of personal and business goals, things that we want to reach for throughout the year and I thought it'd be cool to start a tradition where we share those with you. Now there's going to be some personal goals on there as well as business goals but I thought some transparency and just showing you what's going on in my mind would be kind of cool. So we're going to move over to our whiteboard and talk through each of those points. If you want a machining or fabrication video, this isn't it. It's going to be all chatting, but next week we're going to be starting with our lion lathe project and I know that's going to be an exciting one. So stay tuned for that. So I do apologize in advance. The whiteboard I have here at the shop, is a glass board and the markers don't work too well so it's not super easy to see but I'm going to read through each goal and just briefly give a one or two minute blurb about the goal and we'll kind of go from there. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and jump right in. All right we got the list propped up in the lathe just made the most sense for the lighting. I tried to make this so it was a little bit easier to see. I moved it around a couple times and this is where we landed. So I'm going to go through and read each goal and then just kind of talk about each goal and kind of let you know where we're at. So number one, and these are not in any particular order, but the ones at the top of the list are more important. Um, finish the lion lathe project. Now I know a lot of you guys may not know this, but I'm about six months behind when it comes to filming. And there's pros and cons to that that I'm not going to get into, but basically I'm just filming faster than I'm editing and I'm already halfway through that project, um, but next week you're gonna see the beginning of that project. And so this year, the number one drive is to finish that project. And it is a crazy project with two-speed gearbox that we built, uh, custom DRO setup, coolant pan, coolant pan that's custom, uh, Dorian tool post that's uh, the Quadra Index. It is crazy. Um, and it's gonna be a really good series and it's gonna be very long. Um, and that lathe is going to be very essential for my business and so I want to get it done. I want to get it done right and I want to make sure that it's filmed um, so not only can it be a great machine uh, but it'll be a really interesting video series to watch. So I want to get that done. Um, boring mill running. You guys probably don't know this but I did purchase a boring mill. I haven't revealed it as a new machine yet but those of you who are watching this video, well now you know. So I'll be doing a video on that at some point. I have some footage of it getting moved in and we need to go through it. But like a lot of things in a machine shop like this, machines come in and they sit for a while. And then uh, you hear about them when I start working on them and sometimes it can be a year or two, hopefully not two, um, after they sit and that's extremely normal. So we do have it, it's moved in. I haven't shown it to you, but there's a little bit of sneak, pre uh, sneak preview of what may be coming in the future. But I would like to get it running. Uh, notice I didn't say restored or rebuilt. It's a very large machine. It's supposed to work. Uh, I've seen a video of it running. And uh, frankly, I just need to stop restoring machines and get these machines fixed and running so we can start making money with them. So I just wanna get that plugged in, uh, tweak some stuff with it, and then kind of go from there. But we'll see, you know me, you know how it goes. Buy a 3D printer. I have been putting off automation for an extremely long time, whether it's CNC, 3D printer, plasma, automation is the way to go. Now, I love manual machines. That is not going anywhere. This is not going to be a CNC channel um, by any means. However, some form of automation is good when compared with uh, traditional machining and fabrication. And so a 3D printer is one of the cheapest and uh, easiest ways to kind of get into something automated, whether it be a CNC router or a plasma table or a CNC machine. And frankly, I have a lot of ideas of stuff that I want to make. And I think that is the fastest and cheapest and best way for me to get into 3D printing. Um, and the next goal under it kind of ties in and that is Learn Fusion 360. And to be honest, uh, I've done uh, a couple of projects where I do the drawings and I've made them in Fusion 360 and they turned out great, but they took me forever. That's not because Fusion 360 isn't any good, uh, quite the opposite. It's an excellent program. However, I am extremely slow at learning. 
um, and especially slow at learning software. So when I get it, I'm good, but it takes me a while to learn it, and I've been putting off learning it for quite a while because I would knew uh, that it would be a time commitment. So I think the 3D printer and the Fusion 360 kind of go together because it's gonna help me learn to draw, and drawing is really important in machining. Most of the jobs that I get for machining, I have a drawing, so I don't need to create them, but especially when a client comes in and says, hey, can you make this, um, and he has a couple different ideas and iterations, it would be nice to have a drawing so that I can show them the drawing and they can approve or deny it. Uh, I would hate to machine a part and there be a miscommunication because the part was a little bit more complex and we wouldn't have a drawing to go back on. So for a job shop machine shop, you can probably get away for, without drawings for a while, and I have been doing that. Um, but to have that capability not only helps you read drawings, but to be able to draw things up quickly is gonna be really nice. Um, so that is something that I'm going to work on this year. Um, for sure, the 3D printer is happening soon. I'm just kind of waiting to see which printer I'm gonna go with. I'm really kind of undecided. I'm on the fence between Prusa and Bamboo Lab, um, but hopefully I'll be getting that soon. And I've already downloaded Fusion 360 and already did a drawing last week. So these things are happening early on um, in the year. Next one is to design five product prototypes. Uh, you guys probably know by this point, I'm crazy, creative, innovative, doing all this weird stuff all the time. I've had loads of ideas in my head for products for 15 years. And I'm gonna keep it simple and not get bogged down because that's not my main uh, job here or my main goal. But I do have some uh, mostly like tools, fixtures, ideas for the machine shop and just for organization and stuff like that that I would like to design, test, and if I'm comfortable with it, sell them on a website in low volume. I don't expect it to be a major business, um, but that way if someone likes my organization idea, they can just purchase one, I can print it and send it to them. So it's just kind of an idea that I have. Um, I would just really like to get the prototypes. I don't know that it's realistic to have five um, products ready. Um, 3D printing is really easy, so I know that that is doable, but I'm just trying to keep the goal a little bit more realistic. I want five ideas and five prints of some stuff that I think would be good product ideas and then sort of develop that next year. Five repeat machining customers. So again, this is me just being transparent with you guys. Uh, we're a job shop. And as a job shop, what that means is we do a lot of odds and ends and piecemeal. So we've done um, you know, a moderate amount of machining work last year, nowhere near as much as I want, um, and a decent amount of fabrication, but it's usually all odds and ends and piecemeal. And what I mean by that is random people or businesses that need certain things. And although that's great, really what would be ideal is to have certain customers that are coming back on a regular basis, whether it's for the same part or for new parts, um, stuff that just makes a little bit more consistency in the shop. So we have one customer that is a repeat customer. Uh, last year our goal was two and we got one. Uh, that's a bigger client, which is great, but these are hard to get. And I would love to sit up here and tell you that we got 10 or 20. That's not true, right? We're working on one and we would like to get five this year. Um, you know, we're starting slow, we're being honest, and we're telling you where we're at. So that's the goal for this year. Um, increased knowledge of heavy equipment. I don't know that you guys know this, but my goal in this shop is to be doing machining, fabrication, and general repair. That's what Vanover Customs is. As our shop has grown and as my business has grown, I've tried to niche down. Uh, basically, without getting into too much detail, I quit my original job of eight years or seven and a half uh, in 2020, I think it was, with the pandemic, and went off on my own. And before doing that, I did remodeling full-time for a long time, and so that's what I did. I did remodeling to pay the bills, and I started tinkering with fabrication and machining. And over time, I grew out of the garage, I grew into the shop, and I've slowly tried to turn off the faucet of other industries of work that I did. Automotive, remodeling, woodworking, 
right? None of that is what Vanover Customs is going to be in the future. However, it's what I started out doing to pay the bills while I worked on what I wanted to be doing. And we're not there, we're still working on that, um, but we've made some big strides and in a short amount of time, and I just wanna be realistic about that. And so as a result of kind of that backstory, basically uh, now what we're trying to focus on is fabrication, machining, and repair. And specifically with the repair, we're focusing on uh, repairing of equipment, right? So that can be smaller equipment or larger equipment. We still do a fair amount of automotive work, but it tends to be heavier equipment at this time, buses, trucks, um, you know, stuff like that, E350s, uh, the vans, the buses. So it's more commercial, which is great. Um, however, I wanna move more of the fabrication and machining together to be doing some more stuff, uh, kind of like what Curtis is doing, whether it's buckets, rods, eyes, um, you know, industrial equipment. That's where I would like to move towards. It involves bigger lathes, bigger mills, um, all kinds of stuff like that. There's more money, but it's harder to get into. Um, and there's its own level of nuance that I'm learning. And so learning more about heavy equipment because I didn't grow up in that like a lot of these guys did. Um, I need to learn more about you know, loaders and dump trucks and cylinders and all that kind of stuff. So we've done a couple of those jobs last year. Um, and I know like last week I uh, did a machining job for a guy who's a repair technician. And so we have more of those jobs coming, but I do need to increase my knowledge and that base because that's where I would like to move. I'm not trying to be a CNC shop. Um, I'm trying to focus on repair. And I think older machines working in great shape uh, along with some newer technologies is really good for that type of industry. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what that is. So 40,000 YouTube subscribers, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys. I like doing the videos. Uh, I wouldn't do it if I didn't. But the reality is YouTube, not that great of a platform right now and it's not going to get better. Uh, YouTube is very liberal and they are constantly taking money away from the creators. Um, I think right now we got like 26,000 subscribers and if we had 26,000 subscribers three or four years ago, we'd be making a lot more revenue than we are right now. On average, I think we make, you know, on a bad month, 300 and on a good month, 1,000, which I'm grateful for. Um, however, it's a ton of work to put these together and it's not a viable business really unless you're over 100,000 probably. And even at that point, you could probably pay one person to do it. And so I've been working on these, for a, these videos for a really long time only because I love it and I wanna do the videos that I wanna do. I haven't done any sponsored content. I haven't done anything crazy that someone else told me to do. I've only done the stuff that I wanna do. And that's what makes this channel really awesome, I think. Um, but at the same time, at some point, as the business gets busier, that reason will kind of dwindle, not because I don't wanna do it, but because I am gonna have less time. And so to keep that going, we're going to need to be able to make some revenue so that I can get some help. And right now, I do have help, um, which I'm very grateful for. My boy, Chris, uh, you know, one of my best friends, he is an editor and he edits most of the videos that we do. And that has been a change. Uh, it's been there for about a year, year and a quarter, and it has been very welcomed. And so the next one down here is 10K in YouTube revenue. Again, with the transparency, we made about six grand in YouTube last year, and all of that money went to Chris. Um, and I'm not gonna get into the details of our editing deal because it's just not relevant right now. But at this current moment, every penny that I make from YouTube goes to Chris. I am extremely grateful for the work that he's done and frankly, for the videos that he's edited and the time it takes, the money that I've given him isn't enough. Um, but my hope is that as we become more successful and generate more revenue, we will be getting to the point where I'll be paying him enough and over enough um, to show my gratitude as well as be able to maybe make a little bit of money for me on the side. 
Uh, this is extra information that you guys don't need to know, but for the financial side of my goal for YouTube, um, I am just hoping to make enough revenue to funnel to him first as one of my best friends so that he can quit his job and help me edit full time. So I, as much as I would love to jump in here and collect YouTube revenue, um, really I just would love for him to be able to quit his job and to help me out full time. That'd be helpful for me and empowering for him. So I'm just taking everything I get and giving it to him and hopefully we can get to a point where he's making enough money from YouTube and we can reflect back and say, hey, it makes sense to quit your job. It's been consistent. And so that's what I'm doing with the YouTube revenue. So just being transparent about that. Uh, 50 Google reviews. So I think Google is extremely important when it comes to uh, businesses. Everyone knows it is, but with the machining industry, no one cares. Um, and I'm just being blunt. If you go to Chicago and type in machine shops, you're going to find maybe 15. I don't know, 20 years ago, it would probably be 50. There are a lot of them are closing, but the 15 that you find, maybe you get like three that have reviews, and three of the places that have reviews are like, hey, I work here, or that place sucks, right? And so none of the machine shops have good reviews or focus on it. And I get why they're run by older folks, uh, which is great. I love older people. They have loads of knowledge and wisdom, but they're just not focused on it. And you know what? When you're doing a lot of B2B stuff, it doesn't matter as much. Um, but what it does matter for is it matters for customers who aren't businesses when they search and they see you got 25 reviews and they're all five stars, it makes them feel really comfortable. And it's hard to fake, you know, 100 Google reviews all five star, but it's easy to kind of, you know, work your way with like 10. So we currently have 24 right now. Uh, I'm trying to do 25 each year. My goal is 100. I think once we get to 100 Google reviews, it'll be undebatable when someone searches for machine shops in Chicago, when we have 100 reviews that are positive and someone else has like four or five. And so that's the goal. It takes a while to get these and you really gotta be focused on it every time a customer comes in asking them. Uh, but that is really important to me. I think more so for the future than it is right now. But I think last year alone, we probably got $10,000 of revenue from Google reviews, maybe, maybe, actually no, that's false. It's way higher than that, because the biggest, our, our repeat customer came from that, so maybe like 40K. So that's a big deal, so I know it's a, a, a good thing to focus on. All right, 20K in order, owner's pay. We're getting realistic, we're being honest, and this is no different. So I've had four years in business, I think, or three and a half, um, I think four, but three years on QuickBooks, not ideal, but how it is. Um, for the last three years, my income personally has been negative 5,000 one year, negative 1,000, negative 500, and last year we made five grand personally. What that means, just if you don't know anything about a business, is let's say we made 150, but we spent 145, we only actually made 5,000 because our expenses we're 145, so we only take away 5,000. So this business, uh, without getting into too much detail, I've chosen to run it on a cash basis. What that means is instead of going to the bank, getting a loan, buying all this equipment, and then making money with it immediately, I've acquired machinery slowly with cash. Um, the con is, is it takes a long time and you gotta fix machines, keep the cost low. But the benefit is I don't have any debt on anything in here other than what we're going to talk about, but that's not on any machines. Um, however, by doing it that way, uh, you have a lot of expenses and a lot of expenses early on. And so I'm really hoping that, you know, the first five years of my business, and we're coming up on year four, uh, or I guess this could be year five technically, we spent a lot of money on infrastructure, and then as we start to taper off that spending, we'll start to be able to reap more money in actual earnings uh, because it's really hard to have a conversation with your wife saying that you're not really bringing in any money for year after year after year. But hopefully, you know, long term, we'll be generating a decent amount of revenue and it'll just be a, a short term sacrifice for a long term gain. So this year, I want to actually make some, you know, some money. I'm trying to be honest, uh, right? So like last year, I think our books were 158,000 of like total 
sales or whatever on the P&L, um, but after it, we only saw five, right? So there was like 80 Gs in cost of goods sold, um, and then there was you know, a bunch of expenses in machinery. And so this year, I would really like to just pay us out personally 20K, um, and then you know, the next year, maybe 40. I don't need to be wealthy. I would love to you know, have a nice car and stuff, but at this stage of my life, I just really wanna see this business be successful, see the customers be happy, and know that in 10 or 20 years, we're gonna be okay. So I'm trying to run it that way right now um, for that. If I had kids or my wife was staying at home, it wouldn't be possible this way, uh, but we're not there yet, so I do have that luxury. All right, um, let's see. Post one video for a week for six months. So because we're six months behind, that's good in that there's loads of content. I could tell you all these crazy videos we've already filmed that you're gonna love. We built an angle plate, we built a steady rest, or a follow rest, um, we built a two-speed gearbox. All this stuff is already done, filmed, it's great, you're gonna love it. Uh, but um, what I don't like is when I wanna be able to have like a real talk with you guys now, it's behind. Now obviously this one I'm filming and it's gonna get posted on Saturday, so it'll be in real time. However, uh, most of the videos you see happened in the past by a significant margin. And it's just because I'm filming faster than I can edit or that Chris can edit. And so I would like to kind of catch up a little bit. Um, I don't need to be you know, right on schedule because then if I get sick or if I gotta travel or something happens, I don't got content, right? And so if I'm like a month behind, that would be excellent, right? So that I'm fairly close in time, but I have like a little bit of buffer. And the only way we're gonna be able to do that is to post more videos. And obviously YouTube loves that, but the reality is I would love to be more consistent as opposed to sprint and get burnt out. So currently I have Chris editing one video every two weeks, and we did that for a year. We proved that we can do it. I don't wanna add any more on his plate because frankly, I'm not paying him what I need to pay him to have him edit one video per week. So because it's important to me, I'm gonna step in and try to edit a video every other week and hopefully that'll get us a video every week and also help us catch up. Now realistically, it's not gonna happen perfectly and that's why I have four, six months because it's slower in the winter usually and so I was hoping I would get a more time to put into this um, and then in the summer it gets super busy and then it probably just won't happen. Right, but in the winter, it has been slammed. I've been slammed like crazy. So it's Friday and I'm filming this and I'm lucky that I have you know, two hour window um, in the middle of January, which is a good thing, but we'll see. I'm gonna give myself grace. I'm not gonna go too hard on it. Every two weeks is what we're gonna commit to. That's what we've proven to be good. And I'm gonna try to throw a video in on the off weeks um, that I edit, but we'll see, all right? Payoff truck. Uh, so I bought a, it's not a brand new, but it's brand new to me, a new uh, 2018 Tundra with 40,000 miles last year. Uh, I had per previously owned a 2001 Honda Odyssey, which was 20 something years old and drove that for seven years. Obviously I know how to work on cars and keep these things running and old cars are way better. I love old cars. However, uh, I wrecked that vehicle accidentally it was the winter and I hit a snowbank, and I just didn't want to dump any more money into something that was worth nothing. So I decided finally to buy a truck and I wanted to buy a good one, um, but they're expensive, right? And so I bought one, I've had it for a year, super glad I've had it, I love the truck, would recommend it to anyone else, um, but I want to pay that off this year. It's a big goal, I think the loan has 25K left on it, big goal there, but I want to do it, right? Um, also, credit cards. So I don't advise using credit cards for most people, but as a business, you really kind of need to use credit cards. Unfortunately, just cash flow sometimes, uh, it just doesn't work out. And we had, so I use my credit cards and there's a balance on them. I think I have 12,000 between two of them. I'm not proud of that, um, but basically, you know, we bought a bunch of stuff for a couple jobs. The jobs kind of fell through. Um, and just timing and like some slow spots. So we used them 
And I've been paying them down, but I want to get them paid off, right? I just want to get those guys paid off and clear down to zero. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. Hydraulic press. So you watched the video last week or two weeks ago. You've seen that I got injured. Um, if you didn't, check that video out. Uh, basically, by trying to use the Arbor Press to my right as a hydraulic press. Uh, it's a very beefy Arbor Press, but it ain't a hydraulic press. And I know I need one, um, but I've been hesitant mostly because they're expensive, and they're expensive for the type that I want. I want a 150 ton press. I do like the Dake Press, that's my top choice, but really a custom one would be better. I would like to have one that's wide enough for really large parts, has a larger height. Um, it has some features that even the Dake one doesn't have, but a brand new Dake one is like 40 G's, and they just really, they're, I don't know why they're so expensive. It's, it's ridiculous, they're very simple. So I really think that I should make one, but with time, it's probably not gonna happen. So I've been watching auctions, haven't found one yet, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it's on here to just kind of figure it out, because that's important, and I, I need a hydraulic press, and I need a good one. Um, we're gonna pause right here, I'm gonna take a water break and then come back. All right, I'm sorry about that. If I talk too much without drinking water, I get a headache sometimes. So I had to stop for that. So where were we? Pay off the truck, pay off the credit cards, pay off the truck. Okay, um, bigger 50 taper mill. So we have a bridge port and we have a horizontal 4H machine. And the bridge port is great. And it's not a heavy duty machine and that's totally fine. It does a ton of work but I really, really want a larger knee style mill that I can just hog with, right? That has a 50 taper so it can share tooling with the boring mill and the 4H so I don't really have to get too much extra tooling. But if I wanna uh, like bore out rod eyes, I can use uh, a, like a boring and facing head and set those up on the mill and do those. Um, if I wanna face big plates, I can do those. Yes, could I do a uh, head on the K&T mill, yeah, I could do a horizontal, or I'm sorry, a vertical head, but the throat distance when you do that is kind of limited, and I really would like a Huron mill. I don't think it's going to happen. I seen one for auction yesterday, but it was in Canada. I would like the idea, or I like the idea of a mill that has a ram style head. That way you have a lot of articulation on where that head can be in relation to the bed. Um, but those are extremely hard to find and I don't think they imported them here. Um, so now I know that there's a Van Norman type machine that has a similar concept. So I may be looking at something like that. Um, not quite sure. I really was fixed on a Bridgeport Series 2 because I know they're, they're good machines. I know parts availability is a little spotty, uh, but they are quite beefy in the base and the knee. Um, but only being a 50 taper, or I'm sorry, a 30 taper rigidity, I'm not really sure. Um, I know it's nowhere near a 50 taper, obviously, um, but I would love to just have a machine already set up where it doesn't need to have anything crazy, but I just need to take a, a plate and just buzz it out and mill it down quickly in the uh, vertical position. It's gonna be nice and easy. And I know I could do it with the K&T, um, but really, at the end of the day, there's a reason why knee mills are so popular. Uh, and basically, or basically, it's because setting stuff up is really easy. You're working with gravity, you're setting something down. Um, whereas if I have like an angle plate on the horizontal mill to try to do that, or a head, it's just, it's clunky. So I really would like that other mill, so that way I have one set up basically um, for each of its strengths, right? The bridge port for smaller, vertical stuff, the big stuff for heavy duty vertical, and the horizontal, which is heavy duty and can do all horizontal work. So keeping an eye out for that. Um, welding PAPR, right? So you've seen a lot of YouTubers use these. I know I have, it's like a backpack with an exhaust port to a helmet. It's time. Um, I've been doing a welding for gosh, 12 years at this point. And uh, a lot of times I'm not welding for hours straight but still it can get to you. And I wanna take my health seriously as I age. And also I have a couple bigger offsite jobs that I gotta do where I'm gonna be welding for quite a bit. So I really wanna invest in one of those systems. Not only does it make you look professional on the job site 
or in your shop, but also it really just, it helps. And specifically, when it comes to like stripping machinery or doing stuff that's pretty crazy uh, fume-wise, you can actually wear that same system. Um, and that's always been an issue when I'm trying to like strip a lathe and I'm scaling and I've got a respirator and earplugs and a face shield and stuff still coming up. Whereas one of those, it seals on your face. Um, you can still have a beard, unlike a lot of the tight-fitting 3M full face masks uh, because it's positive air right? Uh, there's movement. So I think having that is going to be essential and we're probably going to be acquiring that soon. So that's a goal that um, we'll be doing quickly. A website. So you guys probably haven't noticed or figured out, or maybe you do. We don't have a website, right? And the main reason we don't is because I would love to do it well. And also I don't want to make a website and have to dramatically change it. And so I've opted not to do one up to this point so that I could really wiggle into my niche and figure it out and be comfortable and then make the website. Um, I don't want the website to have like a bajillion tabs of all these things we do. I want it to be simple, easy to see, and accurate for what we do. And so at the end of this year, right now, um, I feel a lot more confident about what I'd be putting on there than I would have last year when I had that on my goals at the beginning of the year. And I know that even as the year comes to a close, I'm going to be even more confident about what we're specializing in and what we're good at. And that's just normal in business. But because I do so many things, it makes it a little bit more difficult. And so I'm just kind of waiting until I kind of niche down more um, and feel more comfortable until I do that. And I think I should be ready, um, hopefully sometime this year, probably towards the end of the year, to finally get that website up because it is important. Um, now I know that we are potentially going to have some 3D printed stuff for sale and so that kind of goes hand in hand um, with getting a website up. And in addition to that, um, and kind of in the same vein, the next one is redesign the logo and the shirts. This has also been something on our list for I think two years at this point or a year and a half. But these shirts, I put an order in for shirts about two and a half years ago, and I think I ordered 20, and I'm st I still have them, and I still wear them, and that's great that they've lasted that long. Um, but to be honest, the logo, you know, I don't know if you can see, but it, it has a saw blade on it, and I don't do woodworking anymore. Um, I just straight up don't do it. Um, and there's other things on there that shouldn't be on there, and frankly, we just, we need to design a logo that's more machining focused and fabrication focused, and we need to make some shirts that just look a little better or look more modern. I think the V, I think we're gonna keep that as one logo style, so that's not gonna change. But this like, you know, this I would call it a fake logo. It's not really a logo per se, but it's like a secondary logo. Um, I would love to do something either with a lathe or a mill or something that's more obvious um, that we could put on the back of a shirt. And also, I want to change the shirt um, from a t-shirt, I think, to more of like an automotive or mechanic style shirt um, where it's more of a button-up. Um, but I'm still undecided on that. So I'm kind of waiting um, just to see how the year goes. And I think that'll be in kind of like the website marketing type stuff. Um, but it's something that I would like to get to. Fully tool up the machine. So this is a never-ending battle of stuff that you need to do. Uh, in a machine shop, and we are in a good place uh, with tooling. Um, we made a lot of headway last year, but there's still stuff that I need to get for each machine. Um, just real quickly, the blue one is pretty well set. Uh, I need to get a couple smaller boring bars that are carbide that I've broken. Uh, the green lathe, I actually need to get uh, three or four different carbide boring bars from uh, half inch all the way up to inch or inch and a quarter. Nah, probably inch. And so that's going to be a nice little chunk of change. And then maybe one or two tool holders. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty well squared. Um, we swapped out the DRO this year and that was huge. Um, so that machine really is in excellent condition and excellently tooled except for the boring bars. So that's good. The bridge port is pretty good as well. Um, but I would like to get some smaller indexable tooling. Um, 
you know, maybe like a 5 8 uh, APKT uh, insert mill and also be able to share those uh, inserts between that, the K and T, and the next milling machine. I would really like to buy like some inserts in bulk and be able to use them on multiple machines. It's something you have to be smart about when you're doing machining is you can have a whole drawer of inserts, which I have, and you have hundreds of them, but every machine takes something slightly different and it's really just not efficient in terms of money. Uh, it's really better if you can have uh, a lot of the machines sharing inserts um, so that way you can cut down on the styles you need to buy because they are expensive. So that's what I would like to do, just kind of streamline kind of the insert process, not on the lathes, that, that's pretty squared, but more on the mills. Um, so that's kind of what that is with the tooling. Scraping class with Ron. So I, uh, me, Ron Grundy, and a couple other guys, another YouTuber, uh, Little Mule, I think is uh, the channel, at uh, Greg, um, we have like a little group chat and we, uh, we talk a lot about scraping, old machinery, stuff like that. And we actually did like an unofficial scraping class at Ron's shop last year and it was a great time. Um, and we want to do something like that again in my shop. Uh, we want to keep it small, but uh, you know, if you're in the Chicagoland area, feel free to hit me up if that's something that you're interested in. It's not official in that, you know, Ron's getting up there in age. I think he's 80. Yeah, I think he turned 80 this year, maybe 81. And I love Ron, he's great. Um, but it's more so like us getting together, we bring our projects, we scrape, we chat, we tell stories, we eat some food. It's not like an official class where there's all this content, not at all. It's more just an excuse for us to hang out and kind of work on our projects. So we've been trying to set that up and you know, I got hurt and then Ron had some surgery and so we just, we haven't locked that down, but I would love to lock that down this year. Um, so yeah, I enjoy that kind of stuff, just really hanging out with the guys. So sell woodworking stuff, no remodeling jobs. So uh, like I mentioned before, even last year I did a couple very small, specific uh, remodeling jobs, friends of a friend, they were paid of course. I don't wanna do those anymore. Um, you know, I really wanna just be in the shop, not working off site, and really, we did that last year and we were successful except for a couple exceptions. Um, and so I really wanna eliminate that. And then last year we sold off a bunch of woodworking equipment. Uh, for the longest time I thought, you know, I'll just get all the tools for everything. Remodeling, woodworking, electrical, and I'll just be able to do anything and that's amazing. So that way when I have a house, I can do all my own work and I don't really believe that anymore. Um, so. I think I'm still gonna do a lot of things, uh, especially if we do get a house, working on my own cars, working on my own house, but really, I'm okay paying people as long as I can afford it, and it's really hard to specialize and to get good at something when you're trying to learn a bajillion different things. And so with woodworking, I do like woodworking, but I just have to prioritize. And I'd rather get a lot better at machining and spend less time on woodworking, and so that's what I'm doing. So I've sold a lot of the festival stuff that I had. I had a whole woodworking section over there. I've sold most of that, but I still have some straggler stuff. Um, so I really wanna get in a position where I don't have the tools. So when people ask me to do it, it's just obvious I'm not gonna do it. Um, and also, you know, space, uh, opening up space for other machines and opportunities and making income and stuff like that. So we're, we're making, we've already kind of did really good on that last year, but you know, this year I just wanna basically say no to remodeling jobs and sell the remaining woodworking stuff that I'm not gonna use. You know, I'm gonna keep a chop saw. I use a chop saw to cut up pallet wood and make spacers, you know, we're keeping that kind of stuff, but I have a bunch of Bessie clamps for, you know, parallel clamps. I don't need that. Some Festool stuff that I just, I don't need. So we need to get rid of that. Welding turntable. It's surprising I don't have one by this point, but I want something that I can set up. Really, it's probably two turntables, one for TIG welding of small stuff. So if I'm doing piping and I wanna lay a nice bead or you know something small, I can get like a perfect bead. And then obviously one that's more industrial for you know hydraulic cylinder rods or you know larger parts. I have a welding job actually coming up where I've gotta weld a 40 inch diameter, 6,000 pound 
stainless steel part, um, and the turntable for that is massive. Uh, that's another story. But to be able to have some tools to do these bigger round jobs and do them more perfectly, that would be ideal. Um, let's see, coming here close to the end. Fix up the forklift. Our forklift is super old. Uh, it's super venerable. It's a great forklift, overbuilt, uh, but you know it needs some work. When we acquired the building, I did a ton of work on that forklift, replaced seals on all the cylinders, which is great. Redid the hydraulic system, uh, you know, put a catalytic converter on it, replaced the LPG, you know, did a bunch of like engine stuff and hydraulic stuff. But what didn't get any attention is brakes and tires. So the brakes don't work at all. Um, and the tires, they're fine for in here, but anytime I go out of the shop, which I try to minimize, it gets stuck immediately. And we have some gravel out there. So I would really like to move to a tire that has a little bit more tread and isn't 50 years old and redo the brakes. Uh, but the parts are still available, but pretty pricey. Um, and so I've just kind of put that off and I've been able to drive that forklift, you know, using the transmission, which isn't ideal to try to feather the gas um, and use that to kind of stop. Um, but you know, if a truck backs up and I have to unload it, which happens a couple times a year and I'm coming quick uh, or I'm coming medium speed, sometimes I'll hit the truck and that's just, you know, it's not professional and it's not good for those guys. So we need, we need brakes on our forklift, right? Um, so I would like to tackle that. Start pull-ups. I guess this is the only real like personal physical goal on here, but I would really love to do a hundred pull-ups. Uh, it's a lofty goal. I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. I have a good body type for it, um, but I have a ton of physical problems, mostly because I'm too small for this trade. I weigh 130 pounds uh, with none of this clothing on and uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is picking up heavy stuff. So I'm only 31, you know, my knees hurt, my back hurt, and I get headaches, you know, I have all this stuff. And so I have been working on my health and I want to make sure I can make it to 70, 80 years old and not be in a wheelchair by 45. So the pull-ups is something that I am passionate about. It's only upper body. I need to work on my lower body as well, but I want to start with something. Uh, I have switched some diet stuff as well but I want to start with that and I like the number 100. So I know it's crazy, but I didn't put the number on here. I just would like to start it. Um, I want to get a pull-up bar set up uh, in the shop so that when I come in, I can just do some pull-ups and then kind of build it uh, over time, but I just haven't gotten to that yet. So the last goal on here is move the surface plate uh, and metrology room. So. The shop is really nice uh, overall, has pros, cons, as anything does. One of the cons that I absolutely hate about this shop, and you probably already know it but haven't acknowledged it, is it has a transformer that runs my section here in the back and it buzzes and it's loud and it's annoying. And I know that other videos have transformers and it's fine, but I really do care about the quality of the video probably more than I should or definitely more than I'm rewarded for on YouTube. Um, but I want to get really good shots. I want to get really good audio. Um, again, just because that's what I want to do um, for no real reason. Um, I just like to pursue excellence. And that transformer in the back is so loud. It buzzes and in every shot that's not labbed and even the lab shots which you can probably hear you can hear that buzzing and it's just annoying. I thought about replacing that transformer, but it's 75 kilovolts, uh, step down from 440 to 240 or 208, I don't remember. Um, it's like three Gs or something plus installation and I could probably install it, but I just hasn't been a priority. So anyway, where I'm going with this is an alternative to replacing it because it does work fine, it's just loud. Uh, it's been loud for the whole time it's been installed, so I don't think it's going bad, is to kind of wall off some of this section behind me where the loft is and build like a wall to shield some of the noise. And I think by doing that, I can kill two birds with one stone. This area, now that I've moved my toolboxes out of it, is pretty bare and it's open and free space. So what I would like to do is I would actually like to enclose this area under the loft 
which will hopefully deaden some of the sound from that transformer because it'll be a wall in front of it and also allow me to have a sealed room. And I would like to have that room be good for metrology, maybe put a desk in there so I can do some office stuff. I have a, a desk in the actual office in the front, um, but to be able to have one in the back um, or a studio or, or some sort of controlled environment, I haven't decided yet. But I would love to uh, start that project this year. It's not gonna be too crazy, you just take some time and maybe like two grand and some building materials. Um, basically just building walls up to uh, the, the loft and then putting some sort of ceiling to kind of mitigate the sound. And then in addition to that, I have a large surface plate, a four by six. You haven't seen it yet. It'll be some upcoming videos. I want to move that where it's at right now and either get it into the room uh, or move it to a different part of the shop um, so that I can put a bigger milling machine where it's sitting and then be able to take that and put it in a spot where it can be used. And kind of with that, it's not on this list, um, but it was on my other list. Uh, I wanna focus more on metrology this year. So I've already kind of got a head start jump and have been picking up more and more metrology tools, but really machining and your success at machining comes down to measuring. And it is such a large part of machining that a lot of people don't talk about as much as they should. Um, and so I have been upping my metrology game, but I have a long way to go. And so I would really like to focus more on measuring tools, uh, techniques, and just really practice my skills. And so that kind of goes hand in hand with the surface plate and the metrology room um, and stuff like that. So. That is all of the goals on my personal 2024 list. And I wanted to be transparent and honest with you about where my mind is at for the year. When I looked at this and when Monica looked at this compared to her goals, she thought that they were pretty lofty and they are. A couple of these goals, you know, paying off my truck, paying off the credit card and, you know, finishing a couple of these projects like 60, 70 K and, and, you know, finances just to hit those goals. So we would need a pretty big year for uh, in the business to hit some of these. Um, and you know that may or may not happen. But I'd rather get them on here and have me looking at them. Um, you can do goals a couple different ways. You can make them more attainable so that you can mark them off. You can make them more lofty so you really push. And for me, I'd rather just have them up here. I don't wanna make them too unrealistic. I think I could hit these goals depending on how the cards kind of fall with what jobs we get and how much time I have. But I also am aware that a lot of these goals kind of fight each other, right? There's a lot of financial goals on here or goals that require a lot of money. That's gonna require me to you know, be really busy and do a lot of high paying jobs. There's a lot of other goals on here that are very time intensive, you know, learning programs, working on skills, developing knowledge, and that takes time, you know, making videos. There's not a lot of pay coming from that, but it's a lot of time invested. So this year, I know for a fact that we probably won't hit all these goals. I've been doing this for four years, and generally I hit about 40% of my lofty goals, uh, 50, maybe 60, you know, somewhere in that range. But I'd rather have them up here. I'd rather look at them, um, and I'd rather just kind of see how the year goes. You know, maybe we do more video stuff and do more learning stuff, but maybe don't get as much of the financial stuff, or maybe we get more of the financial stuff, but less of the other stuff. I don't really know, um, but this is what's going to be on my mind this year. Um, and this is probably a little bit of a snapshot as to what you may be seeing in some of the videos coming up. Um, I know for a fact, this year, you're going to be seeing a lot of videos on the Lion Lathe project. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be there's videos on making uh, nuts for the cross feed, uh, making a cross feed screw, uh, a tailstock rebuild, making a two speed tailstock, doing a tailstock DRO setup with the DRO, not just a little caliper, like integrated. Um, we're going to be building a steady rest. Uh, building a follower rest for the American lathe. A lot of that stuff has already been filmed, so that's gonna happen. Uh, you're probably gonna see a video or two on the boring mill. Um, 
I want to have some videos in there about customer projects. I've already filmed one customer project video. Uh, it was a machining job that I did last week. Um, so, you know, we built an angle plate on the k &T. It turned out really nice. We got a sky hook and built a bunch of accessories. You're going to see that. Um, there's a lot of videos that hopefully get posted this year, and that kind of gives you an idea of what to expect. But the main driver this year is getting that lathe done. So I'll get it done, and there's probably about 30 videos slated for that, and I probably have 14 or 15 filmed. So, you know, do the math. You're going to be getting videos uh, throughout the year on that, and then hopefully I'll be able to interject on off weeks additional content as well. Um, this video was a lot of talking. Um, there's no way around that. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to run a business and to run a YouTube channel. But to me, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be honest, transparent, um, doing things that I want to do, enjoying doing it, doing things that not a lot of other people are doing, uh, challenging myself, and just trying to have fun and maintain making money and keeping the bills paid in the shop with trying to do things that are enjoyable. And that's kind of the balance of what I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to do that for as long as I can, um, regardless of how much money we make, either from YouTube or in the business, and then you know, kind of go from there. So let me know what you think down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you next week for the lathe starting of the project. Thanks.